Joe, what happened in Thailand? Think about also what happened also in India. Well, we are so privileged to have here on the Rita Cosby Show a dear old friend of mine and a, a wonderful man who cares deeply about his country, the Vice Prime Minister of Israel, Mr. Sylvan Shalom. How are you, sir? Hi, Rita. How are you? Oh, it's wonderful to talk to you, and, and so great to have you on the show, and great to have you here in our country, too. Uh, it, it, first of all, how is everything going in your country? What's sort of the sentiment there? Um, so many of uh, so many people and so many of our callers and everyone, we always pray for peace in your country. First, I would like to really thank you for having me in your show. It is always a very, very uh, well-known show, very rated, and I'm very happy to talk to you once again. In Israel, of course, we're always uh, trying to seek peace with our neighbors, and at the same time, we will do everything to keep our safety and security. Unfortunately, you know, the last uh, revolutions that are taking place in the Arab uh, world don't bring the Arab Spring like we uh, were expecting to or wishing to, but it brought, as we see it, as the Islamic winter, because all the extremist powers, all the Islamist groups uh, came to power, and uh, they are not uh, really like the idea to all the negotiations or to have peace treaty with Israel. So uh, these days uh, we are uh, facing a new phenomena of uh, countries that are even signed peace treaty with Israel, like Egypt, that the new regime is uh, talking about maybe cancelling it. And we have to make sure that we will keep our safety and security in all of our borders. Now we look about Syria and Iran. And Syria, of course, uh, President Assad continue to uh, kill his own people, firing a uh, building school with children, uh, all the men and women, uh, with the help and the assistance of the Iranians and the Hezbollah. And in Iran, uh, they will do everything they can in order to achieve a nuclear bomb. And of course, the main threat is toward Israel. How concerned, you know, there's so many topics there, of course, uh, and everyone, we're talking to the Vice Prime Minister of Israel, Mr. Sylvan Shalom. Uh, Mr. Vice Prime Minister, you know, when you hear all these things, there's so many things to, to, to focus on between Iran, and there's been some new reports coming out um, that Iran is working closely with Syria, working closely even with al-Qaeda. Um, how concerned, first of all, I guess we should talk, let's talk about Syria, sort of the, the revolution that we're clearly seeing there, the people fighting in the streets, and, and obviously the bloodshed by the Assad regime. What should, do you think, what should Israel, you know, is there something that anyone can do and that U.S. should do at this point? No, Israel don't want to intervene because it will be a, a very good uh, excuse for Assad to blame Israel that we are behind uh, those demonstrators and we are behind those who are asking for liberty and freedom. So we are not going to give him a chance uh, to blame Israel for that. Uh, that's what you would like to see, that Israel is trying maybe to uh, back or to help uh, those demonstrators. We are not part of the game. But the international community show its weakness, that they cannot stop the bloodshed there. They cannot stop uh, the massacre. And unfortunately, Russia and China are preventing any uh, kind of sanctions that should be imposed by the Security Council because uh, they really look at uh, Syria as uh, their front base in the Middle East. They are very much afraid that if there is, uh, there will be an uh, intervention uh, within Syria about human rights, it might uh, be followed uh, to uh, the question of human rights in China or in Russia with Chechnya. And of course, they believe that if uh, Syria will fall, it will help uh, the West world uh, to bring uh, the Iranian regime down, and maybe by that uh, to take control of uh, the whole uh, Middle East and the whole uh, oil fields, that it's the reserve for the next, uh, next 150 years uh, for the entire world. Egypt was the other thing that you discussed, and there's, and obviously I definitely want to get to Iran with you because that's a huge issue. With Egypt, with the Muslim Brotherhood, and you touched on this, Mr. Vice Prime Minister, you talked about the huge concern, them kind of, their rhetoric, and a lot of people think it's rhetoric, and I certainly hope so, when they have threatened, look, U.S., if you cut off aid to us, Egypt, um, we may renege on our peace treaty that's been there, you know, since the 1970s with Israel. How concerned are you, and do you think that that is just, do you think they ever would do that? 
Of course, we are very concerned. Uh, we signed the peace treaty with uh, the late president of Egypt, Anwar Sadat. That uh, peace treaty was kept by uh, President Mubarak, even that we called it a cold peace. And for that, we paid an heavy price. We uh, withdrew fully from all the Tana Desert, and uh, we uh, destroyed some settlements that we had there, just in order to have uh, peace and quiet uh, with uh, Egypt uh, forever. Not for 30 years only. And uh, since uh, the revolution and the outcome of the election in Egypt, like in every other Arab country, is that the Muslims or the Islamist groups are coming to power, the Muslim Badur. And they have said more than once that they don't want to have any kind of engagement with Israel. We are very concerned about it, and we would like uh, to find out what would be uh, the next uh, step when they will hold the presidency uh, election, and uh, those elections are supposed to take place in a few months. And the question is, uh, we uh, will become the next president. If the president will be committed uh, to uh, the peace treaty with Israel or not, you should know that uh, the president is the one that is in charge of uh, foreign and uh, defense issues, while uh, the parliament and the house is in charge only of uh, internal issues. So if the Muslim Brotherhood will uh, put a candidate of themselves uh, for the presidency and you will take the will lead, so of course it will be a very, very negative uh, development that we don't want uh, to uh, see uh, happening. Absolutely, uh, and I think a big concern, uh, you know, for the U.S. and for everybody. Uh, I, you know, when they made that threat the other day, I know so many people, even here in America, uh, were very, very concerned, and obviously supporting your country tremendously. The so, Americans are trying to uh, have a kind of engagement with the Muslim Brotherhood, and they believe that it might help them if uh, they will take the lead, uh, uh, not only in the parliament, but uh, that the next president will be from their camp. I'm not so sure it will help, but uh, of course we can't uh, tell the Americans uh, not to do it. uh, These days in the Middle East, they look at what's happened uh, in the last year, and they found out that they cannot rely on the West anymore. Because you have to know that President Mubarak was very, uh, with very Western uh, attitude, uh, and the approach, and as well as uh, Ziad bin Ali, the president of Tunisia. Even Qaddafi was, uh, you know, kind of a secular uh, leader that had some relations with the West. And all of them were abandoned uh, immediately, especially the president of Mubarak and president of Tunisia, that were uh, even uh, blamed for many, many years that they, that they are uh, puppets of uh, the United States. So now uh, many in the Arab world are asking themselves if they can rely on the West for the future after, uh, you know, uh, 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 Mubarak and Ben Ali were left uh, out uh, so easily. No, absolutely. There's so many mixed messages. And a lot of people have said, you know, a question here in America about going into Egypt because they've sort of said maybe the the devil you know is better than uh, somebody else or like the Muslim Brotherhood. At least there was a relationship with Mubarak, as as you point out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, even, uh, you know, that it was not, uh, let's say, a liberal regime that gave uh, freedom or human rights uh, like we know in the West. But still, uh, they were a uh, much more open society that women can could play a key role, could uh, dress uh, the way they would like to. And now when uh, the Muslim Brotherhood is taking the lead, it will be very much different. I believe that the Egyptian people will realize in a short time that they made a huge mistake in the last election, but I can't blame them because the only uh, opposition groups in all the Arab world that were existed for so long against uh, the regimes that uh, were ruling there were only uh, the Islamist groups. So while uh, uh, they have to vote for someone, they're voting for those that they know that uh, they were opposition to the old regimes. And uh, they voted for them, no matter where. I would like to believe that they will find out in a short time that they made a mistake and maybe we'll try to change it. Well, stay with us if you could. Uh, We will continue right after the break with the Vice Prime Minister of Israel, Sylvan Shalom, and we're going to talk about Iran when we come back. 800-321-8828. 
And this is the Rita Cosby Show. We continue with Sylvan Shalom. He's the Vice Prime Minister of Israel. And Mr. Vice Prime Minister, you know, there's been a lot of talk today. Um, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said that she welcomed Iran's stated willingness to restart negotiations, called it an important step. And she's referring to a letter uh, that apparently was sent this week by Iran's chief nuclear negotiator proposing new discussions between Iran and the West. Uh, what do you make of this letter? Unfortunately, every time while the Iranians are feeling that there is a huge pressure that is imposed on them, they are trying uh, to uh, asking uh, the international community to get engaged. And, uh, of course, all of us are looking for the engagement of the Iranians in order to uh, find out their military program. But they are bluffing for so many years. So uh, we can't in Israel believe them that they are really serious about their willingness uh, to uh, have any kind of engagement that will put an end to their efforts to develop a nuclear bomb. We are uh, uh, asking the world for many, many years to stop them. Unfortunately, for a very long time, they were looking uh, for engagement with the Iranians. They were not sure that the Iranians are uh, having a military program. Now, after uh, very long, uh, the, most of the world uh, knows very clear and they have all the proofs that the Iranians are having a military program that they would like to achieve a nuclear power and a nuclear bomb. And I don't see uh, why we can uh, give the, the Iranians to buy, my, uh, to buy more time. They are bluffing all the time. And uh, I am very skeptical about uh, their willingness uh, to negotiate in order to stop uh, their military program. If they will do so, of course, uh, none of us... Uh, uh, won't be uh, said if they will stop uh, their uh, program, but uh, we are in Israel very skeptical about it. Is it uh, seem like just words on a piece of paper with no substance behind it? I don't see any letter that can change uh, their uh, main goal. The main goal is to uh, get uh, that insurance policy that they believe they will have uh, to keep the regime in power if they will have a nuclear bomb. And uh, they have a very, very big plan. Their big plan is to change the type of the regimes in the Middle East, to take control of the oil fields of the Middle East, to have a nuclear bomb, and by that to revive the Persian Empire and to become a nuclear superpower that will have an insurance policy to keep the regime in, in power forever. So uh, I really cannot uh, see them uh, changing their attitude unless, the sanctions will be much uh, tougher than they are uh, now. Even that I have to uh, say that uh, we are very much appreciate the last decision that was taken by the European Union to uh, boycott the Iranian oil because we know that in Europe they are facing uh, uh, an economic crisis and it's not so easy uh, to take such kind of a decision, so we don't take it for granted. Uh, the decision was followed by the United States, by Canada, Australia, Japan, uh, South Korea. We are very happy with the last decision of the President of the United States uh, to freeze uh, the money of uh, most of the Iranian leaders, but it's still not enough. What is needed is to impose sanctions on the Iranian Central Bank, and if those sanctions will be imposed in the Iranian Central Bank, it might bring them to rethink that maybe they are wrong, and in order to keep themselves in power, they maybe have... Uh, in a country to uh, cancel their military program or to achieve nuclear uh, bomb instead of uh, moving on in order to have it. And very quickly, I want to ask you, Defense Secretary Leon Panetta came out and said that he thinks it's possible that Israel may take some military action against, uh, you know, what's believed to be these nuclear sites um, as early as this spring. Is that a possibility with your country? Israel is not talking about a strike. Israel would like to see the international community imposing a real and tough sanctions on Iran in order to stop them and to prevent their uh, program. But of course, we cannot uh, put, uh, we cannot uh, left uh, any, or we cannot. Uh, 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 we would like to know, we would like everyone to know that all the options are on the table. We wouldn't like uh, to go uh, to any uh, military uh, attack. It's not in our system. It's not in our goals. We would like to do everything we can in order to stop them. But you have to know that Israel cannot live with the idea that the Iranian will hold a nuclear bomb because the Iranians said more than once 
that one missile from Israel, uh, from uh, Iran toward Israel, will destroy the Jewish state. Oh, no, it's, a, it's the, the rhetoric the, is extremely concerning. And unfortunately, we're going to a hard break, uh, Mr. Vice Prime Minister. We are so grateful to have you on the show and very, very wonderful to have you with us. Thank you very much, Rita, once again, and I'll be very happy to be in your show whenever you ask me to. Thank you so much. What a pleasure to have you. We'll be right back. 800-516-1220. 800-516-1220. 